Hello everyone. In this video I will show you how my hexacopter handles motor failure. I made my hexacopter able to continue flying with one motor out, because sooner or later it might be expected that an ESC motor or propeller will fail. I installed an Arduino on the hexacopter that intercepts the signal from the flight controller to motor number 5, that is the front left motor. Also, I coupled a switch on my transmitter to one of the auxiliary channels of the flight controller. The flight controller passes this auxiliary signal also onto the Arduino. When the switch is set high, the Arduino passes on the motor signal from the flight controller directly to motor number 5. When the switch is set low, the Arduino stops motor number 5. Now let's see what happens in the air. The motor out zet. Well, not much really. You hear the other motor spinning up in order to compensate for the one motor that stopped. Your control is very bad. It spins very fast in one direction, but it's not able to turn in the other direction. Normal forward flight is not possible. When trying to do so, the hexacopter will fly circles. However, by activating simple mode, the heading at time of arming becomes the reference for the flight direction. And it becomes again simple to fly the hexacopter in every direction. Although the hexacopter flies on limited power, it's still able to climb. Instead of turning the motor off gradually, I will now turn off the motor suddenly in one moment. Now I will do the same, but in forward flight. The hexacopter starts flying in circles, so we activate simple mode again in order to control flight direction. Ok, we've just seen that my hexacopter flies very well after motor failure. Now let's talk a little bit about the characteristics and settings that contribute to this. First, pitch and roll control versus yaw control. If you lose pitch or roll control, your hexacopter will crash. If you lose yaw control, your hexacopter won't necessarily crash. Especially when using simple mode, you can still control direction of flight and make it home for a safe landing. My knowledge of the autopilot code is not very good, but I think that this piece of code deals with yaw control versus roll and pitch control. It limits the amount of yaw control to the amount of control capacity that is left after having taken care of roll control and pitch control. In this line the amount of yaw control can be overruled by your headroom, if your headroom is larger than the limited amount of yaw control that was just determined. However, when the amount of yaw control becomes larger than the amount of control capacity available, you increase the chance of losing control of a roll or pitch. To minimize this chance, I've put your headroom to zero.
The second thing that makes my hexacopter fly well after motor failure is the amount of power. One propeller motor combination can deliver 1.7 kg of thrust, while the total weight of my hexacopter including camera is 4 kg. The horizontal position of the center of gravity is located at the center line of the frame. During normal flight, each motor propeller combination delivers around 0.66 kg of thrust. When one motor fails, the opposite motor becomes quite ineffective. But the four remaining effective motors can produce more than 6.5 kg of thrust. This is sufficient for keeping altitude, even climbing, and also for controlling roll and pitch attitude. This is reflected in the fact that my hexacopter already hovers at 36% of maximum throttle. For those of you who want to test their hexacopter as well, I will tell now something about how I tested my hexacopter in a safe way, step by step. I made a strong attachment point for a line at the center of the hexacopter. I attached the upper end of the line to the branch of a tree in such a way that the hexacopter had several meters of free space around it. Somewhere halfway the line I inserted a chain of rubber bands and looped the line around it every 20 cm. This prevents the line from hanging slack and ending up in one of the propellers, in case the hexacopter climbs a little bit. I turned the flight controller on while the hexacopter was standing on its case. Only after the flight controller initialized I removed the case and the hexacopter was hanging freely ready to be armed and starting the tests. I performed these hanging tests in stabilized mode. In stabilized mode the motors would slow down faster than an altitude hold, in case I would turn the throttle down completely in case something would go wrong. In the first tests I only applied a very little bit of throttle before I started turning motor number 5 off very gradually. In the next tests I applied a little bit more throttle every time before I started turning off motor number 5 until the hexacopter was almost flying on its own without the support of the line. Then with motor number 5 off I increased throttle until the hexacopter was flying virtually without the support of the line. Because the hexacopter started spinning with motor number 5 off I had simple mode activated all the time in order to control position. Once I knew the hexacopter was able to fly with motor number 5 off, I started to increase the speed with which I turned motor number 5 off. Once these tests were done, I did the same tests free flying, this time with altitude hold activated. And finally I tested turning off motor number 5 suddenly in forward flight. Because I wanted to perform the tests with payload but without my expensive camera, I equipped my hexacopter with this silly block of wood with bolts and nuts that has the same weight and COG as my camera. Ok, this is the end of my video. I hope it is useful for all of you who want to make their hexacopter be able to make a safe landing after motor failure. I carried out all the bits and pieces of this work I just showed you during the last couple of months, so I'm sure I've forgotten something. If you're missing something, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. For now, safe and happy flying.